Hey everybody, I'm Todd with Sweet Tea Guitars. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. And welcome to the Great Guitar Build Off 2023 and my scratch build entry. Alright you guys, we left off in the last video for the Saris. This is where our neck blank was at. So I've got the angle cut into the back of the headstock, eight degrees right here, just like my other neck that I'm doing for the Astrolabe guitar, which is part of the collaboration that I'm doing with Gio from Tornelli. I've got everything drawn up down the side here. And I've been told to hide my eyes on camera and that way I can get some of this stuff in focus. Anyway, I've got the thickness that I want. I've added a couple of millimeters to make sure I'm safe. I've got the heel thickness that I want down here, same deal. And I've got my headstock thickness drawn out right here. I've got my nut line copied over to the side and to the back of this neck so I know where not to cut. I'm gonna jump over to the bandsaw and cut this material away. I'm gonna leave myself a couple of blocks. I'll leave the heel the full thickness and I'll leave an area below my volute at full thickness so I can still sit this down flat on a table. When I come back, this neck's gonna be rough cut. I'll be right back, you guys, hang tight. Well, I ended up getting it pretty much roughed out at least. I've got this template attached to these alignment pins, two here, two here. I'm gonna pop this template off and actually attach this template with some super glue and masking tape to make sure this thing does not move. And we're gonna kick over to the router table and get the perimeter shape of this neck cut. And I don't need much, I just need enough to hold this template. I don't wanna take a chance of it coming off and causing me any drift or anything like that. And then I'll just make sure we're nice and attached to this neck. We got the perimeter of our neck shape pretty much sorted out. I'm still way wide right there where my nut line's at. We're gonna sort that out right now. I need to cut these alignment pins off of both ends of this neck at this point so we've got a nice flat surface. So let's get that done first. I'm gonna take my little crank neck Narex chisel and we'll just pare these away. All right, let's we'll sand those down flat, just a little. I don't wanna mess the shape of my neck up at all. That's the start of my nut or the intonation point. We're gonna get up on this line or as close as we can get to it. And I wanna find the center of that purple heart first. There we go. I'm going to take a 0.5 millimeter pencil and then we'll come down here on this end and do the same thing. That way I can make absolutely certain that the nut line is perpendicular to the center line on the neck. Let's draw it in. We'll double check it visually. We're dead in the center of that purple heart, which is what I want to be right there all right there is my nut line so what we need to do now is i will connect this ruler right here to the side of this neck because it's already got the taper cut in it and i just want to make myself a line i've got lines drawn on both sides of the center that's 21 and a half. That's gonna give me a 43 millimeter net width, which is what I'm after. When I go to sort out the headstock shape on the spindle sander, I now have a line right here that I can go by and I can stay a half a millimeter or so off of that line and then I'll hand sand that or use files or whatever to sneak up on that 43 millimeter width right there. I'm still considering at this point using a Floyd Rose. I need to make sure I leave myself plenty of room for the locking nut. Well, I already know a Floyd Rose nut is 15 millimeters wide or deep. 
and I don't need that full width out of the headstock, but I do need to leave myself some play. All right, I don't want to let that move. I'm going to take a 0.9 millimeter pencil and trace out this headstock shape so we can see it really good. So I've got a nice shape and it looks like my headstock ends meet up perfectly with that 43 millimeter nut width. So we're good to go with that. I need to cut just a little material off this end right here and leave myself a tenon. So I just want to go down to this line I've got drawn here, which is 20 millimeters below the surface. All right, that looks good. We're gonna come in from this end and I'll stay a little off my line on this end. I could have done this way easier on the bandsaw, but I really wanted to show you guys that I wasn't above using hand tools for this kind of thing. Plus, I wanted to use this Japanese pull saw for a while. I want to get down to the bottom of that saw cut right there and even this out. Make it all nice and pretty. There we go. That's all I was trying to do. Let's get myself a lip cut right there. All right, you guys. Welcome back to the shop. Tonight is Thursday, July the 13th. I screwed up the Catalox fretboard. I kept grinding and grinding and grinding on my truss rod nut access hole. It got way too big. I put that thing somewhere. I was kind of mad when I did it. I may cut the end off of it and use it for a 22 fret guitar. We'll see. What I've decided to do is use a piece of solid black ebony. That Catalox is beautiful, you guys. I'm not trying to make excuses. I screwed it up. But we're going to slot this ebony fretboard, get back to work on it. I really think the solid black ebony is going to do a good job. So let's pan down here and get straight back into work on this thing. This is a 25-inch scale guitar, 24 frets. So this is the nut line we're cutting first. I'm going to go ahead and get my wax out here. I'll wax my blade. And we're just going to go cut 25, uh, 24 slots, 25 actually, counting the nut. All right, you guys, here we are. 24 frets, black ebony fretboard. I think this is going to work out really nice. What we need to do now is take our fretboard template, lay it down on the fretboard, make certain that the fret slots are going to end up perpendicular to our center line. We're about to make a center line right now. I'm going to let the fret slots determine where my center line ends up, or at least partially. I'll make myself a center line tick there. And we'll make ourselves a center line tick there. I'll take my ruler. Line it up on those two tick marks. And there's our center line. So now what we can do is I'll lay this fretboard template back down on here. We'll get it lined up on that center line. Trace out our fretboard shape. We're gonna get the fretboard glued on the neck tomorrow evening I'll get it rough cut first. We'll drill some alignment pins in there. We're going to continue to roll forward this weekend, you guys. I'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel again, you guys. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Tonight is July the 14th. We're going to pick right back up where we left off last night. So I need to hop over to the bandsaw and chop the two edges off of this thing to within a couple of millimeters of my final dimensions on this fretboard. I think I'm going to pull a geo on this and this is such a great thing to do 
Geo lines off everything with masking tape. So I'm going to put this down the edge of my line as long as I stay a couple of millimeters off my tape I should be fine. So there we go. Now I don't have to have um, that much light over there. I don't have to carry any extra light. Such a great idea. Thank you Geo. That made quick work of this thing. So let's pull this tape off here now. Let's draw out the end of this fretboard. I think what I'm gonna do when we go over to the router table to route this end in, which we need to do before we attach this fretboard, I think I do wanna extend it because the truss rod nut sticks out slightly beyond where it would if I had used this template for the full fretboard markup, which I did not. I knew I wanted something a little bit longer to where that notch is not so close to that 24th fret line. And I'm only gonna put it about two and a half, three millimeters past where it's at naturally. And what I'll do is just draw this in so I can replace it back in the same spot roughly when we mount it with super glue and masking tape. trim off that excess there we go so we're burnished everything's ready to roll I want to make sure my center lines lined up because we won't get another chance to get this placed I'm not using any activator because I want those couple of extra seconds to be able to move my fretboard and make sure it's in position All right, you guys, I'm going to hop over here to the router table. All we're doing right now is routing out this end notch. I don't want to use this fretboard template to route the sides of my fretboard. I would rather use the sides of the neck that I've already cut. Anyway, let's get this done. All right, that's all I wanted to do. I'll finish that up with files. Let me get this mess I made cleaned up over here. We're gonna come back, I'll get the end sorted. We're gonna drill a couple of alignment pins. We're gonna get this fretboard glued to the neck. I'll see you guys in just a second. I've worked a little on this thing, not much. I'm gonna finish it up right now. All right, I think I'm happy with that. Now we'll sort out that end a little better. Once we get it glued to the neck, I'll be able to get that exactly like I want it. So we're gonna take this two millimeter drill bit. I'm gonna drill down through the fret slots. One on this end, on this side. One on this end, on this side. We wanna stay off our center line, but we want as close to the center as we can get. I've got myself a toothpick right here. Now I want to attach these alignment pins with just a little super glue. We don't need much. We just need enough to hold them in place. I don't want to put enough on there so it starts to puddle up around that toothpick because that'll hold our fretboard off. We don't want any imperfections in our neck surface. We'll double check that before we um, slide the fretboard back down on these things. Now I'm going to clip these off a little closer so they're not sticking up into my fret slots. Now we'll make sure that we've got good alignment. We're looking good, you guys. All right, you guys, let's tape up this truss rod slot real quick. I'm going to use this lapel wood glue this time. 
because it dries 100% translucent. Pull our tape off. I made up this clamping call because you don't want to introduce a ripple down your fretboard. That pad actually helps spread that pressure out over the length of the fretboard. Nice squeeze out all the way down. All right, you guys, we're going to wrap it up right here. I finally got the fretboard glued to the neck. I'm really happy with this ebony. I think it's going to look great. In the next episode, we're going to get the tuners drilled in. We'll get the fret markers and the side dots marked out. We'll get our neck shape started. I want to figure out what I'm going to do with the heel transition as well as the volute. I didn't get as much work done in this episode as I wanted to, but I've lost some time over the past couple of weeks. I've had some things to do around the house. I've been working on the build that I'm doing with Geo. I'm having a blast doing that, you guys. I hope you enjoy those videos and that series that we're doing for the Great Guitar Build Off Community category this year. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay up to date as I release these videos for my scratch build category entry this year. I think both of these guitars are going to turn out absolutely fantastic. I think Geo's is as well. So you guys stick around. Thank you so much for all your support. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, peace and love.